I've had the pleasure of being around Donovan a few times and, and like him. Uh, I, but I will have to respectfully disagree with his comments. Um, and, uh, you know, people forget, you know, year two, I still think we would have made the Super Bowl with Carson. You know, we, you know, we made it with Nick. I mean, he was having an, an MVP type season as well, year two. You know, T.O. responded to our guy Big, Big Seal's tweet because Donovan McNabb came out earlier this week. In case you missed it, he said the Eagles are still a year or two away from being Super Bowl contenders. Now, Donovan, <laughs> I don't know what you're watching, my friend, but uh, Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback since you. And this team is probably the best roster since that 2004 team that also started off 4-0. So I don't know what uh, Donovan McNabb is watching. But I kind of tend to agree with T.O. that he's never seen a more jealous person than Donovan McNabb. And I've I've interacted with uh, McNabb in public appearances, and he does get jealous. He does get uh, guarded, and he does seek attention. And I think that the Jalen Hurts success has bothered him some. For him to come out and say that the Eagles are still a year or two away from a Super Bowl, I don't know what he's watching. And and he attributed it to Jalen Hurts being too young. Really? Was Patrick Mahomes too young to win a Super Bowl? Was, was Joe Burrow too young to lead his team to the Super Bowl last year? I got to ask our guy, uh, Coach John D. Filippo, who's been waiting patiently in the green room, and pop him up over here. Coach, good morning down there in Florida. Hopefully you guys are doing better than you were a week ago down there with all the weather. Yes, we are, Rick. It's great to be back with you and Tone. As the old saying goes, haters going to hate, man. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, for you. To, for I, I'm not, I, I've had the pleasure of being around Donovan a few times and, and like him. Uh, I, but I will have to respectfully disagree with his comments. Um, and, uh, you know, people forget, you know, year two, I still think we would have made the Super Bowl with Carson. You know, we, you know, we made it with Nick. I mean, he was having an, an MVP type season as well. Year two. I, I think if, if you see these young quarterbacks get in great situations with good players around them, uh, there's no reason these guys can't have success early, you know, and, and when you have the balance of coaches and, and, and players around that young man. So, um, like I said, I, I respect the heck out of Donovan McNabb, what he did as a college player, as a pro player. I mean, unbelievable career, but I just have to respectfully degree, uh, disagree with him. No, I'm with you, Coach. And listen, I'll give McNabb his credit where credit is due. He, in my opinion, is the greatest Eagles quarterback of all time. For, for, yeah, yeah, for 100%. Okay. I mean, right. the longevity part of it. I mean, you'd have to put him and Jaws up there, right? I mean, from in terms of the longevity piece and, and the so. games won and, and those things. So, for sure, I mean, the way you're judged as a player is what you do over the, over the course of time. So, um yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, the career that Donovan had was incredible. Yeah, I mean, listen, McNabb was great, and Hertz is probably the next best thing we've seen since then in terms of how he's trending, and we'll get to him in just a second. Hey, by the way, Rick, I got to say something. I didn't know I was going to get a treat with some college football talk today, baby. <laughs> that fired me up, man. <laughs> what a treat that was to listen to that. Oh, man. Coach, wait until – the calendar flips into 2023. I need to start, I'm in a little neighborhood college football pool here each week. I need to start calling you before I make my picks every Friday afternoon. Hey, we got we got some picks for you too. And uh, <laughs> my Jersey boys, by the way, Rutgers in action against Nebraska tonight, oh. trying to get a Big Ten victory here in Jersey and Piscataway. I mean, that, I think that might be a first. I, I that's going to be I, that's going to be a good game. I, I could. They I might storm the field. Watch, watch out now in Piscataway. They might storm the field. <laughs> The last oh, time man. they did that, here's a quick Rutgers story, Coach. You'll appreciate this. So when they faced Louisville, I think it was 2007, Teddy Bridgewater was the quarterback. Yep. And Rutgers came back. They won the game. It was a late-night affair. I mean, this game didn't end till like, 1 o'clock in the morning. Everybody stormed the field. I'm, like, one of the last people on the field with the scarlet night and everything else. And wouldn't you know it, at the time, I was living in Astoria, Queens. And none of the trains in Piscataway go back to New York City after 1 a.m. So we had to take a yellow cab from uh, Piscataway to Queens. And we get to the city and the cab driver says, I don't go into Queens. 
I said, what do you mean? You drove us all the way from Piscataway. Now we're in Times Square trying to get over to 59th Street Bridge. He's already got me for like a buck 50 on the meter. <laughs> right? <laughs> I said, what do you mean you don't go to Queens? So he lets me out in, in Times Square. And I get into another cab. We get over to 59th Street Bridge. And my cab driver gets into an accident. I no. swear to God, you can't make this up. So now I, I, I'm over to 59th Street Bridge in the middle of an accident after the Rutgers-Louisville game. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning, and the cab drivers are screaming at each other. I said, yo, I'm out of here. I hop in another yellow cab. It took three yellow cabs to get home. Wow. From the Queens from Piscataway. <laughs> Go Rutgers. My point is – you could see another scene like that tonight. If Rutgers beats Nebraska, it's kind of a big deal for the it's Rutgers. It's a huge team. deal. I don't care. Like when, when when those teams are down, and just because, you know, I, I've, it's been a while since I've coached college football, but um, I've evaluated a lot of college football in the past, you know, 15 years. And even when, like, the Nebraskas and, the you know, and Alabama hasn't been down in a while, but when I first came to the league, they were down, you know, the club, you know, when, you know, certain Florida states are down, they still have players. Yeah, they still have good players in a lot of spots. Maybe they don't have as many as they do now, but they there's that those are still historic type programs. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, we remember Tommy Frazier and Tom Osborne and those great Cornhuskers teams. So um, I'll be keeping my eye on that tonight. But let's get into this NFL uh, Week Four recap, Week Five preview, however you want to phrase it, Coach. We'll get into Jalen Hurts and the Eagles and all that good stuff, but they got a tough matchup in Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. And I say that tongue in cheek because I, I sat up here and I said Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray at 24, 25, and one career record together in the NFL really haven't succeeded expectations or done anything of relevance. They started off seven and zero last year and then they finished. I think four and six down the stretch or whatever it was, four and seven down the stretch. But as you're aware, the last Eagles victory in Arizona back in 2001, you know, they don't go out to the desert too often. Um, Kyler Murray is an interesting case study because the Eagles do practice against Jalen Hurts each and every day. But Murray is a little bit more of an athletic freak. He's shorter. He's a little bit more elusive. He can scramble around. I I, I keep re referencing that play, you know, 26 seconds of game clock to just gain the two-yard run. That's how much this guy improvises and extends plays. Quite frankly, I haven't seen anything. It, it, the, the closest thing I've seen to Kyler Murray is Fran Tarkinson highlights, okay? So how do you game plan against a quarterback like Kyler Murray? Yeah, yeah. Um... It's it's not easy. You know, there's a, there's a thing called plaster. You talk about with your DBs all the time. Um, you talk about the difference between like a Jalen Hurts where he, to me, he uses his athleticism and running ability to go forward and, and make positive yards. Kyler uses it, you know, that way, but also to, like you said, it's a little bit more backyard football. So those, it's going to be really important for the defensive backs of the Eagles this week to, to plaster the, the, the DB, the uh, receivers for the, um, for the Cardinals, because the more he runs around, the longer he holds on the ball back there, it, it's easier for those guys to get open and, and find spots, especially if you're playing zone coverage like the Eagles do a lot. So um, that's going to be important. Like to me, I've never been a big, I, I love Dane Vandernat. It's my guy. It, I, I, I still think you need to rush four against this guy. I really do. Um, the key when you're playing a shorter quarterback, and I've had a couple shorter quarterbacks and uh, Johnny Manziel and, and we always, you know, Gardner's 6'1". Um, you know, we always had issues when we had interior pressure. And so we, if you can push the pocket, the center and the two guards, um, that to me is is the biggest cause of concern. Because you, you know what's going to happen. I mean, the Eagles defensive ends are, are this week are going to be, you know, they're going to be wide and they're going to be rushing up the field to, to keep contained, to at least contain the quarterback to where uh, – you know, his buddies, they can rally to the football a little bit where if, if, if you get, if you keep contained and then you get interior pressure, it's hard for the quarterback to get up and out. It's hard for the quarterback to push up in the pocket. Now all of a sudden you got a five, 10, five, 11 quarterback, what we call throwing from the foxhole or I hate to 
equate anything to what the military says. We equate to you're throwing, you know, an old hand grenade like this because you, you yeah, can't no, we get throw it. The football. So we always used to say, you know, stay back in the pocket. You never want to have to hand grenade a ball. And, and I think that's the key is get enough pressure on him where he has to make a quick decision. But at the same time, interior pressure for the Eagles is going to be key for this game. I like that, Coach. I like it a lot because Rodney Hudson, the center, is banged up with a knee injury coming out of Florida State. Very good center, by the way. Justin Pugh, who you're familiar with, uh, was back with the Giants. He's now starting at left guard. He had an injury this week. His backup had an injury this week. So that interior of the offensive line, Will Hernandez is the other starting guard, by the way. So I think Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrove, they could be in line for a a big-time day here. And and those guys played really well last week, too. I mean, you know, they played really, really well last week. I mean, you saw Trevor having to break contain and, you know, we'll talk about that performance here in a little bit, but I I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, the Eagles can create what I just talked about with, with the players they have inside. And that's what I expect them to do. But I mean, you got to force the man, you got to force Kyler to stay in the pocket and make decisions and press him interiorly in interior part of the pocket. And, and I think if they do that, you know, I I think the Eagles are going to have a tremendous amount of success. I mean, you look at the Cardinals offense. I mean, they're the lowest scoring offense in the first half in the national football league, averaging four points a game. Uh, the Eagles. They're are a fourth one. quarter team, though. They're a fourth quarter team. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's like, but can you can you live and die like that and win a championship? I don't know. No. Uh, it, time will tell. You know, time will tell. I, I don't know. I, you know, the old you know football talk starting fast, and, and I'm, I'm still a believer in that, and that's why you know how I'm why I'm so high in the Eagles' offense because they're number one at 23 points a game in the first half. So that to me is the stat of the day coming up into this game is I just don't, I think the Eagles are too good for you to get a slow start on. I think, you know, and, and I mean, look what happened. Look what happened last week against the Jags. I mean, the Jags are up 14, nothing before you, I had my first sip of diet Coke and, and, you know, it's, it's, we're thinking, Oh, here it comes. It's going to be a a long day for the Eagles. It's pouring rain, blah, blah, blah. And, and, you know, the play of the game in that, in my opinion, in that game was when Trevor Lawrence overthrew the, the touchdown to go up 21 nothing when he overthrew the receiver down the right sideline um he makes that throw i don't know what happens i still think the eagles come back and win this is the kind of team they are but um that was a huge huge play in that game so even you know you see the recipe of starting fast against eagles you got you got these great teams rick and tone you gotta put these guys away like you gotta find a way to put teams away and it could be offensively scoring a bunch of points like the eagles doing and they're playing great defense right now too or or you got to blitz and get home. You got to put these teams away. You got to do it week in and week out. I mean, you know, it's just it's hard when you when you're when you're all of a sudden you're you're in fourth quarter mode and you're down three scores with you know ten minutes to go and you're playing street ball out there and hucking it all over the place and and it's just that's hard football and it's hard to win and week win and week in and week out with that type of football. Yeah, we've seen the Eagles' opponents try to win with that formula. It doesn't work now. The Cardinals are outscoring opponents in the fourth quarter, 49 to 13. They have the biggest fourth quarter uh, differential. So the Eagles will need to play a complete football game. But let's be honest, they've led every game going into halftime. Even last week, you mentioned that would have put them up 21 nothing. It would have been a big deal because the Eagles bounced back. They went into the half 20 to 14. They withstood the uh, Dougie P. Uh, punch in the mouth, so to speak. And they did give him the standing ovation, by the way, which was great to see. And he deserved yeah. that. Any thoughts there? Did you see that? I was, I was really happy. I saw the replays of it on television. Uh, I was not surprised um, um, because as passionate a fan base as, as the Eagles have and the town of Philadelphia is, they, they still respect, you know, former Eagles. And, and if you did a good job there, and obviously Coach Peterson did not a good job, but a fantastic job. Yeah, and we see that in the chat room each and every week when you join us. The Eagles fans have nothing for love, but uh, for Coach Flip here on the football. Right back at you guys. Yeah, man. Each and every Friday, by the way. So buckle up. My favorite uh, hour of the week, Rick, I got to say. Spending hey, an hour with mine you too. 45 minutes with you and Tone. What else mine too. And I get a little dose of college football, and I got to throw out a little, you know, love to your, your – I saw the list when I was sitting here in the green room in my, in my, in my room. I saw the list of concerts come up there at the Ocean Casino and Resort. That was a pretty good lineup right there. Coach, I'm trying to tell you, man, we got a suite waiting for you whenever you're ready. 
I love it. <laughs> we'll get down on the we'll get down there at the Eagles pre and post game, shake it up a little bit. Love it. Uh, so let me ask you then. So Trevor Lawrence, to me, uh, who, who who who's been a pretty mobile quarterback when needed. He kind of the Eagles kind of made him look like a statue back there and had him all kinds of disorientated. Uh, what what happened exactly from your point of view? Yeah, I mean it's just poor ball security. I mean, the one where he was flushed out to the right and fumbled, I think the first fumble, no one touched him. I mean, the ball hit his thigh and it came out. And, um, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to the Eagles, you know, defense and, and the coaches too. I mean, obviously they, they teach swarming the football because the majority of the time you put a couple of balls on the ground, you're going to recover a few of them. And, and the ball just bounced right in the Eagles' hands. And usually when you when you hustle and you're around the football, good things happen. And, and that's just the old mantra, whether you're playing offense, whether you're playing defense, if you – if you're hauling, if you if the ball gets thrown on the other side of the field and you're the receiver on this side of the field and you're hauling butt to get over there and block for your buddy, usually good things happen. If the ball comes out, you make a key block, you spring for the touchdown, you spring instead of a 15-yard gain, you get a 40-yard gain. Usually good things happen. So that that to me was 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 awesome. Um, I think the biggest disappointment I saw uh, out, of, out of Trevor's performance really wasn't the, was the obviously the fumbled snaps and everything. That that that, that, that can't happen. I mean, it just can't happen. I mean, it, it, there's nothing in the world that deflates a practice or a game more than when you fumble a snap. I mean, that's the most fundamental thing you've been doing since you've been in fifth grade was taking yeah. a snap from center. And I know it's frustrating for those guys. It was wet. We've all been there when the ball feels like it's a, it's a, I don't know if you've ever been a kid, but back down when I lived in, in the South and they used to oil up a, you know, a watermelon and throw it in the pool for all the kids. And it's like, it's like a grease ball. I mean, it, it's hard. We've all been there, but it still can't happen. And um, the biggest disappointment I saw was I thought in the red, the, the interception in the red zone, which would have put it, I think a one score game, he forced the ball. And it was a great play by, by the corner bait and, and throw that ball. But the, the, the receiver uh, was wide ass open on, excuse me, pardon my language was wide open in the, on, on the wide route. And if he just dumps it down, he probably just, you know, it's a first down and, and they move on and they may, may make it a one score game. And that to me was the biggest, was the biggest disappointment of uh, that game was that decision. He, that, that can't happen at that time of the game in the red zone. It just can't happen. Yeah. Coach Flip here. And don't worry, we don't have a PG rating on this show. Coach. Right. <laughs> so on the opposite end of the spectrum, though, Jalen Hurts just continues to defy all odds. You said it at the top of the segment. Haters are going to hate. There's still media brethren out there that don't believe Jalen Hurts is the future franchise quarterback. But I Rick, when are people going to start to believe us? Do. When are people going to start to believe us? We've been saying it since week one. <laughs> I mean, what does the kid have to do? He hasn't beaten anybody that's of relevance. Oh. That's what... <laughs> Get out of here. But he beat, he beat a $40 million quarterback in Kirk Cousins. He might knock off a $46 million quarterback in Kyler Murray. And they'll come back next week, and the haters are going to say, oh, well, the Eagles haven't beaten anybody of relevance. Meanwhile, they're the only undefeated team in the National Football League. You know, it, just from being in the NFL long enough, I mean, it, there's there's so many – and that's why we all love it. There's so many people that are just just love it and memorize stats and know all the players, and that's why it's the, the biggest sport in the world. You know, I, I know I'm a your FIFA fans and all of the Premier League guys. That are, I, I got it. I, I'm a Premier League guy too. But the, the NFL football is is just so so huge, and um, everyone's going to have an opinion. Unfortunately, and some of those sometimes are unjustified, and sometimes they're warranted. And uh, unfortunately for this young man, he's playing at an unbelievably high level. I hope for him it continues. I hope for the Eagles it continues. I hope for the Phil city of Philadelphia it continues. Um, and we won't know, but I, there's nothing that on the tape or when you watch the game that shows you it's not. You know, it's just, there's just, I don't see any, like, there's not, like, you just don't see a lot of fluky plays, like, you know, yeah. or a ball going off a guy's hand and, and for a touchdown and all of a sudden they go, you know, what, you just don't see a lot of those plays. You see a lot of good, clean football and um, on both sides of the football and in the kicking game. I mean, hats off to Jake Elliott last week. I mean, that was a getting hit in the leg and then coming in and and, and making that kick. And I mean, they're they're right now they're rolling on all three phases. And, and like I said, I hope it continues. But I just don't see a lot of fluky football out there. I see a lot of good, clean football. And, and like I said, I hope it continues for those guys. Yeah, I always thought 
you know, the third year of, uh, of a quarterback is really the make it or break it season. And this guy has done nothing but elevate his game. And you mentioned Jake Elliott. I think both the Cardinals and the Eagles are going to have backup kickers. In this oh, match. is Jake out this week? I did not check the news report yet. Yeah. It sounds like Elliott's out. They signed Cameron Dicker, the kicker. Okay. I did not check the injury report. I apologize. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't know for certain, but he did not practice again yesterday. He has an ankle. They did sign Cameron Dicker. They had a bunch of kickers in on Tuesday for tryouts. They might have two active kickers come game day. I don't know, but it's not looking good. Um, by the way, I got to ask you because it's like this Eagles revenge tour this year. Zach Ertz was asked about his time in Philadelphia. He said the last 18 months were kind of uncomfortable, but he gave a lot of kudos to Nick Sirianni for making him feel comfortable. He said Coach Sirianni actually went out of his way because they were both put in an awkward spot, right? Yeah. And so he said it didn't exactly end – like he wanted it to, but he's got nothing but love for Philadelphia. He came as a 22 year old youngster, raised a family. You mentioned the World Cup. I think Philadelphia is hosting the World Cup. And of course, his wife is a big time soccer player, and he's got um, the Hope organization. I think he's still well embedded in the Philadelphia community. This game means a little something for the Zacherts. I mean, what can you give us from your takeaways of uh, being? being with Mr. Ertz day in and day out. Um, Zach's one of my favorite players I've ever coached. Um, he uh, is not only a great football player, but he's a great person. And Zach um, is like all great guys that touch the football. He wants the football. And people are like, don't you dislike guys that, you know, really, really are, want the football? I go, heck no. I said, I want guys that want the football. As long as it's not a distraction where they're going to the media or they're going in the locker room and they're saying that. But if you come up to me, you know, because I was, you know, I was in charge of presenting the red zone game plan each week in Philadelphia. If he didn't think he was involved enough, he wouldn't talk to me on Friday. <laughs> You know, he, he would literally walk right past me in the hallway, not talk. I like that, though. I like that. I, have to, I literally had the red zone list in my hand, and I'd say, hey, Zach, you're the first progression here, 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 and here. Okay? He'd be like, oh, okay, Flip. All right, all right, all right. And he'd be fine. But, see, that doesn't bother me at all. I mean, great players want to be great, and great okay. players want the football because I don't want some guy that's going to go out there and and, and, and not perform well and, and not want the football to come his way. I mean, you want these guys to – freaking catch the ball and like you can't call the slant in the Super Bowl and go score, you know, and, and, and anytime you're in the red zone and Zach Ertz was in there, I mean, he was a threat to, to, to score and what a dynamic player. Um, like I said, you brought up some things he does in the community. I mean, he, he and his wife are just tremendous people. Yeah. Um, and uh, really had a fun time spending two years with them in Philly and, I wish Zach nothing but the best. I think it's probably a good move for for both team, both parties that, you know, he uh, moved on and sounded like that's what he wanted. And, and you know, Dallas was ready to step in. And, um, you know, it was good for Arizona, obviously, to get a player of that caliber that was still young and can still do can still do some of the things that he did when he was in, you know, in the younger prime of his career. Cause he's kind of in the prime of his career right now. So um, I love Zach. Truly an Eagles all time. Great. I mean, 100 percent. I mean, and in fact, I think he's second all time. He, he, he 10 catches behind Howard, Harold Carmichael all time on the Eagles. Really? Yeah. And with eight, eight, eight catches this week, I'm full of uh, useless stats, coach. Uh, eight I catches this stats. week, he'll pass Ozzy Newsom on the wow. all time tight end list. Yeah. Wow. Right. Putting himself in pretty good company. You're and I, I I made this uh, comment the other day, like when Ozzy retired, I, I'm pretty sure he was number one across the board in all tight end receiving categories, but he's been knocked down a few notches. He's eighth all, he'll be eighth all time once Ertz uh, passes him. But yeah, I mean, some of these tight ends now, you know, and I don't know where they all rank on the list, but I mean, you go back to like when I came into the NFL with Jeremy Shockey, I mean, you know, guys like that, that were just dynamic, that were not just your why you know, tight ends that are just really a, a taller offensive guard. You know what I mean? That, that yeah. these guys could could run a little bit. And 
you, you know, there's so many dynamic tight ends these days that it's such a great matchup. My favorite position on the team. Well, hey, Coach, John D. Filippo here on a Football Friday, the Football Playbook. Rick Saratella here with you. Uh, I want to pick your brain on some uh, uh, week four performances that stood out to you. Now, next week we're going to face Jason Peters and the Dallas Cowboys. Cooper Rush, I got to ask you about him because he's doing things that he's the he's the only quarterback since Kurt Warner to be undrafted and I think win his first four or five starts. And, and they asked Mike McCarthy uh, about the game this week against the world champion Rams. He said, I can tell you one thing. We're not the underdogs, even though they are on, on paper. But what do you make of this Cooper Rush-led Cowboys now that head into the Rams? I th- I think the Cowboys – call me crazy. I'm going to get into my pick em here after this segment. I think the Cowboys got a, a shot to win this game. And they're right there in the hunt. They're not going away here, but Dak Prescott might be back for Philadelphia next week. But just to talk about Cooper Rush, man, an undrafted free agent. This guy is just playing lights out. He is playing lights out. And here's – I've watched probably about a game and a half on the games he's played. I I really admire the way he keep, he keeps the game really simple. You can tell. I mean, the ball comes out. He knows exactly – he has a plan. When he goes to the line of scrimmage, this young man has a plan. When that ball hits his fifth step – if, if, if they're throwing a hitch route and the corner's seven yards off, he's going to take that six yards and, and move on and play second and four football. And then they can, you know, either, you know, run, then the whole playbook's open. You know, so that to me is a young player that hasn't played a lot of football in this league. I think that's the, the that's something we always preach in the quarterback room. Keep it simple in your mind. Okay. Whenever you're having, you're struggling a little bit with the decision or you're struggling a little bit with your accuracy, Always remember, remember your techniques, your fundamentals, and your progressions. And that that this, that's what this young man's doing. He's keeping it simple. He's letting his playmakers make plays. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys are always going to have playmakers on offense. I mean, they're always going to be good. Um, you know, so that's the most impressive thing for a young player that hasn't played a lot. I, 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 I watched him coming out, um, and he played at Central Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he had and, that big uh, Hail Mary play at the end. Uh, and watched him come out and thought, you know, this is a guy that, in my opinion, is probably going to be a career number two, right? It's how I wrote him up from what I remember. Um, adequate, not great arm strength, but plays the game really smart and gets the ball out and is just a little bit of a distributor, just distributes the ball yeah. and, and, and does the right thing. and doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And, you know, he's athletic enough to move in the pocket. He's got some pocket athleticism to him. I'm really impressed with this with this young guy, and I'm, I know when Dak comes back, they got they're going to play Dak and all that, and full speed ahead with Dak because Dak's earned that. Um, but at the same time, you, you can't discredit what this young man's done and kept them in it. I mean, all you can do at this point of the season is keep pace with your division. Now, that's all you can't look too far ahead. You just got to keep pace with your division, and the fact that that he's keeping them in that in that, um, you know, not only has he been a help to a Dallas to the Dallas Cowboys, but he's been a help to himself because. With the majority, not all, because there's some, obviously there's like, it's like anything. There's some better people at certain spots than others. It, it, the, the normal backup quarterback, let's just say your, 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 your starter misses four games, right? You're hoping two and two, in all honesty. That's what you're hoping. You're hoping two and two at the best case scenario, three and one. And this young man's come in and, and obviously played, outperformed that. And kudos to him, hats off to him. He's doing a great job, and um, I always love—I always love to see great quarterback play. So, you know, yeah, I'm—I'm I'm, I'm biased to guys that just do it, just do it the right way. No, you're right because I remember Lamar Jackson got hurt last year. Huntley came in; they went one and three or zero oh and four, and those games started. He played well, but they didn't win games. Cooper Rush is winning games, and it goes back to the old thing: you can't go broke taking a profit. That's what Cooper Rush does well. Uh, it seems like him and Kellen Moore are just connected. At the mine, you know, it's funny. Kellen kind of played the game a lot like him. Yeah, you know, yep. Kyle, you know, wasn't the most talented guy in the world. Absolutely, smart, kept out of Boise State. Yep. They he kind of played the game the same way. And unfortunately, I was uh, last time I was coaching college football I was the OC at San Jose State, and Kellen Moore was on the other side of of the uh, sidelines playing quarterback at Boise. And 
I thought they were going to score 100 on us that night. It was like 42 to 7 or something at halftime. I was like, oh my gosh, this team's going to drop 100 on us. San Jose was, State in action tonight, by the way. I guess I, 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 and one of my best friends, I'm going to throw a shout out to Brent Brennan. He was the receiver coach when I was there. He's now the head coach and doing a heck of a job at San Jose. That is not an I, easy And, and my guy, Fred Goducci, out there. Do you know Fred? I know Fred yeah. well. Yeah, that's my paisan. You know. of, that's my guy. Fred's my that, guy. That's my go-to Italian restaurant guy when I'm out in San Jose. He's always got the recommendations. So. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there's not too many good Italian restaurants out in Phoenix. I uh, I would assume that compared to Philadelphia in the Northeast, I would tend to probably agree with you. Yeah, Sariani is going to be in trouble this weekend. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> Coach Flip here on the football playbook. Uh, let me get some impressions from you from uh, week four NFL action. Who are some uh, quarterbacks or players that stood out to you? Yeah, um, two guys that played against each other. I mean, you got two guys that kind of got thrown to the curb that played against each other. You got to give a shout out to Geno Smith and Jared Goff. I mean, both those guys had an unbelievable day. Uh, Jared Goff's playing an unbelievable high level right now. That Detroit offense right now is rolling, man. It, it, that they're they're scoring points. They're they're throwing up yards. Um, kudos to to Dan Campbell and his staff. You know, because you know a lot of people are, are you know would have said that you know Dan Campbell is going to be the, one of those run the ball you know you know four yards in a cloud of dust type coaches. And yeah. you know, good for him recognizing the strength of his football team. Now, and I'm not saying they can't run the football because they have run the football with, with those guys, but I'm just saying understanding that they're going to have to score points to win football games, and kudos to Dan Campbell for recognizing that and letting Ben Johnson, his OC, do his thing. So I That Ben a Johnson's a good one, by the way. That What's Ben that? Johnson? That Ben Johnson seems like a great football mind, by the Ben's way. Ben's a stud, man. Ben's a stud. Known Ben a long time. He was a GA, a graduate assistant coach at Boston College, and my dad was the AD there. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So I've known Ben a long time. He's a I, I knew Ben. Ben was a bright guy back then. He seems really smart. Just even keel, doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. And I sent him a text this week and not to get, you know, I said, hey, Ben, keep doing your thing, man. And I said, appreciate the head coach supporting you in terms of what, what you're doing. Like, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And, and I, I work with Anthony Glenn in Cleveland, who's not a DC there. That The defense will get better. AG's too good of a coach for it not to. Um, so kudos to him. And again, Geno Smith coming out, playing well. Everyone wrote him off too. Uh, he's come out and, 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 and played really, really well this year. Um, good for him. I thought Saquon Barkley played really well this weekend. I, I Even though they're in the division, Rick, Tone, I, those old throwback giant unis look freaking sweet. Yeah. Those look really freaking cool. New York and football then, giants, yeah. A, a guy I wanted to draft in Jacksonville um, – and he got picked one pick behind us was TJ Hawkinson going back to the Lions. Breakout game for TJ. You know, another Iowa tight end that came out and, and, and played fantastic. So, yeah, those four guys, you know, I, and, you know, throwing out some Eagles guys, I thought that you got, I mean, you got to give Driscoll and Opetta some, some love too. I mean, to come in and when, when two alignment go down and, and, and play like they played, um, kudos to those guys. Like I already mentioned, Jake Elliott, I mean, Hassan Reddick. Playing fantastic, he's playing lights out right now. And, and and on a day like that, Miles Sanders, I thought, took over the game game at times, and, and yeah, really just kind of was the kind of the the the, the foot on the throat of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he had um, a career day, you know. And so, whenever you're in those conditions and and be able to score that amount of points and have that those guys, you know, play so well, those are the guys that around the league I thought I thought did really good. Yeah, Barkley, man, he's back to his old form. He's got a uh, 125 plus scrimmage yards in three of the first four games here. They're going to be on in London uh, early yeah. morning. Cake, kegs and eggs. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, so. I got to ask you, the Geno Smith. I can't remember a, 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 a quarterback resurgence late in the career. I, I got to go back to like Rich Gannon to think of a quarterback that kind of like Gannon kind of hung around as a backup for like a decade or so. And then I think with the Raiders, he just came out like a gangbuster and uh, became this great pro bowl caliber starting quarterback. I, I can't remember. He was, uh, yeah. One year, he was the MVP. Yeah, you're right. He did. He won the MVP. Yeah, he yeah. Won the MVP. I think it was 2003. Maybe. 2003. Sounds about right. Sounds about yeah, right. He won the MVP yeah. one year. Yeah. 
So hey, I'll tell hey, you uh, what, Coach. before I leave you, before I leave you, I got to get your opinion on something. Sure. If how many points does Saban drop on Jimbo? Oh. I you know they they they've been they've been uh, uh, spawning in the media right for the last year or so. So I'll tell you what I you know Alabama is laying twenty four. I, I that's a lot of points. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be like a. Um, I, I, I'm thinking they score about six or seven touchdowns. It's gonna be like 48, 35. Something you, you like think? That. That, wow, you think A and M's gonna score many points? I, 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 I think it's gonna be closer than twenty four. I don't know if A and M scores that many points. I think Alabama puts up a lot. I think A and M keeps it within striking distance. But yeah, I mean, listen, Jimbo, Jimbo got him last time, I think. So they did. They beat him on field goal last second. Sa- Saban's Saban's on his revenge tour this week. So I, I could see how, now. I'm with Coach Woods. I want to know what Bryce. What's up with the status of Bryce Young too? Yeah, he's got a, he's got a sprained a, a MCL. So maybe they won't be scoring up as much as as, as I want them to. And uh, it's been a little bit of a busy year here, Coach. So like, my head isn't on the full spectrum yet. Uh, I'm with you. but yeah, I'll tell you what, man. That's why <laughs> one of the Bryce- million reasons I love being on with you and Tone is, you know, I want to give your listeners the best my, my A game, and and so it it really for I I'm sitting there, my wife's making fun of me because I'm sitting there with, with my notepad right here while I'm watching the Eagles game, freaking jotting down things that I see. The playbook, the football playbook. Tell her, hey, we're here each and every Friday. It's what we do. Let's uh, go. <laughs> Coach, I can't wait to get you up to Atlantic City. We're going to get down to the uh, Ocean Casino and Resorts. They got all kinds of concerts. They got the Eagles pre and post game. Uh, I know for sure they're going to take care of you. And by the way, they got a good Italian food. Ooh. at the. I can guarantee you that. Uh, something they won't find out in Arizona. So Sariani is going to have to do a quick good tour because they might be heading back there, the Super Bowl is in Arizona this week, or uh, this year in February. Was, so. hey, just remember now, hey, pump the brakes. It's week five. <laughs> pump the brakes, right? Okay, coach. Let's not, let's, go, let's, not, let's not peak too soon, baby. One one at a time. Hey, and then once we start getting around week 12, we can start saying the SB word. Okay, fair enough. Fair right, enough. Fair? I will tell you this, though. When we come back next week and we go into the bye week and we beat the Dallas Cowboys and we're 6-0 – and oh, and we go into the bye undefeated. Then we can we can start whisp we can start whispering it then. All right, and we can tell Mercury Mor- Morris and the boys to just keep that champagne on the ice over there. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach. Hey, Flip. Always a pleasure, man. We'll do it again next week. Sounds good, guys. Have a great weekend. Go Birds. Thirty-four twenty Eagles. See you guys next Friday. Thanks.